In this video, we are recapping the major severe weather outbreak earlier this week. After that, we are continuing to watch more unsettled weather in the south as the Storm Prediction Center has highlighted areas of potential severe weather through Sunday. Also, we are watching a potential April snowstorm form on the weather models as it could end up affecting areas you might not expect. Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. A massive storm system brought tornadoes, tennis ball size hail, and blizzard-like conditions to a large swath of the United United States this week in a multi-day severe weather event. Our severe weather coverage began on Monday, April 11th, with an enhanced risk of severe weather. Storms fired off in Arkansas, where seven tornadoes were reported and intense hail moved through Conway and Charleston. Tuesday posed an even greater threat as atmospheric conditions looked to be even more favorable for an intense severe weather outbreak over portions of the Midwest. We provided over 11 hours of live coverage as multiple tornadoes touched down across Iowa, including this incredible footage from storm chaser Brandon Coppock as a twister crossed the road in Humboldt. Another tornado touchdown was captured by storm chaser Vince Welty in Dakota City as it tore through fields and multiple homes. The National Weather Service in Iowa has confirmed at least four tornadoes so far in their state, with more tornadoes being surveyed in Minnesota. Iowa wasn't the only state hit hard. However, Texas saw multiple rounds of intense storms that brought giant hand-sized hail and tornadoes. We watched live as the destructive tornado tore through the town of Salado, Texas, causing major damage damage to homes and a church. The Salado, Texas tornado in Bell County now has been confirmed by the National Weather Service to be a high-end EF3 with wind speeds over 165 miles an hour. Over 19 tornadoes, 23 injuries, and at least one fatality have been confirmed from Tuesday's severe weather so far. Yet another intense day appeared likely on Wednesday as the atmospheric conditions were the most favorable for an all-hazard severe weather day. This one ended up being not as bad as the other ones, but it still caused a lot of problems with widespread damaging winds, large hail, and quick spin-up QLCS tornadoes. Not to mention all this happened while a major snowstorm impacted multiple states in the north, bringing feet of snow to some areas, and a huge ongoing wildfire event. And after three days of non-stop severe weather coverage, we were able to celebrate a major milestone together as the channel passed 500,000 subscribers. After this intense stretch of severe weather, I'm very happy to tell you that I don't have any sort of news for you that's going to lead to us having another event like one of these in the near future. The short-term weather forecast is certainly a lot quieter, but it's not quiet. Let me explain why as we continue to talk about the weather. All right, let's start off by taking a look at the SPC forecast here as we do expect severe weather today, tomorrow, and the next day. It's not gonna be on the same level as what we've been seeing, but it's certainly going to be severe. There is a slight risk of severe weather today in Tulsa down to Fort Smith, really close to Little Rock. The main threats today are gonna be wind and hail, but an isolated tornado cannot be ruled out. This is not going to be a tornado outbreak, but I still want you to be prepared for the potential for a quick nader or two, all right? And then tomorrow, things are going to calm down quite a bit, but we're still going to have heavy rain from Texas all the way through the deep south into portions of Florida and Georgia and South Carolina. And then all the way out there on day three or Sunday, we do have another slight risk of severe weather down here in Louisiana, southeastern portions of Arkansas, also down here into Mississippi and Alabama, some of the same places that have just been hit over and over by severe weather. Once again, I don't think that this is going to be a huge severe weather outbreak, certainly not a tornado outbreak, but this one is something that we've got to keep an eye on as we go forward, so be weather aware down here, and I'm going to explain all of the threats with the weather models right now. So if we look at the future radar or the high resolution rapid refresh model here, you can see all of our swirling snow squalls up there starting today at 6 p.m. That's where the radar loop starts, and you can see over here in our severe weather risk area, there's not a lot happening, at least until maybe around 10 or 11 p.m. We're going to see some sails fire up there. Once again, hail, maybe some wind, and certainly a lot of heavy rain moving all the way down into portions of Mississippi, Tennessee, and Alabama. Another round of big storms is going to pop up back here during the overnight and early morning hours uh, in Oklahoma and Arkansas and continue to push down in the same direction. If we zoom in here a little bit closer, you can see that uh, we do expect some of the hail to be the big problem here around 10 p.m. tonight. And then very quickly, this turns into a wind and rain threat. This is not going to be a, a very severe storm coming through Nashville, for example, but certainly a lot of heavy rain, and especially on the southernmost side there coming into Birmingham around 3 or 4 a.m., you're going to hear the thunder. There's going to be some wind and stuff. And then the second round of storms is going to form right here along the border of Oklahoma and Arkansas around 4 or 5 a.m., uh, and then bring some more rain, potentially some hail, damaging winds, and an isolated tornado or two all the way through Little Rock. And then this is going to turn into uh, just, once again, a, 
a, a, a typical springtime thunderstorm event uh, for a lot of the deep south as we go all the way through Sunday. Early in the morning on Sunday around 8 a.m., we're still going to have these springtime morning showers and thunderstorms. That thunder that really lingers in the air and it feels like it lasts forever and it wakes you up. That's the kind of uh, storms that we're talking about here. But as we go later into the day on Sunday, we do expect more storms to form, especially south of this big blob of moisture here. I think there's going to be new storms forming in the uh, po southern portions of Mississippi and Alabama. That's why we have that day three slight risk of severe weather. Now, our future radar doesn't go out far enough to really see what's going to happen there, but the ingredients are in place for severe storms, including damaging winds, hail, and tornadoes. So we'll keep you updated on that. In my personal opinion, the biggest threat we're going to see out of this upcoming severe weather is going to be the heavy rain and flash flooding. Let me put this into motion here. Let me show you all the rain that we're going to expect uh, through Sunday. And this does not even include that final round. We could see some areas to hit near Memphis approaching three inches of rain. And I think that this is actually underdone with the amount of moisture that we're getting up from the Gulf of Mexico. This area right in through here could see two to three, maybe even four inches of rain by the time this is all said and done. And you guys know if you live out here, you've already had flooding problems. The ground is super saturated. Uh, so this will lead to more flash flooding out here in portions of Tennessee, Arkansas, Mississippi, and Alabama. Do whatever you need to do to prepare now just in case that flash flood warning is issued. Okay, we never want to undervalue the importance of a flash flood warning. Once again, tornadoes are scary, damaging winds, hail, all that's bad, but flash flooding is the number one killer most of the time in these situations and you don't want to get caught off guard. We're going to move on and talk about a little bit more into the future, but first, uh, if you live down here, you're going to want a way to track the severe weather this weekend. So what I recommend is getting a good radar app. And as you guys know, I love Radar Omega and they are today's sponsor. Let's hear about them. Radar Omega, more than just a radar app. I've been using Radar Omega on my phone since way before they sponsored the channel. And let me tell you why. It's fast, smooth, and it always just works. It's the most customizable radar app that exists. And there's nothing even close. You can not only view radar, but also satellite and model data as well. And you can view those in 3D. Also, a network of live cameras across the US allow you to see what's really happening on the ground as that storm approaches your neighborhood. Check out the links in the description to figure out why tons of Ryan Hall Y'all subscribers are now using Radar Omega as their number one trusted source of weather information on their phone. Now, let's get back into the video. All right, let's zoom out and look at the whole lower 48 here and really nail down the forecast for everybody as we go forward, all right? You can keep up with the time and date above my head. Here is our nuisance rain and severe weather that we're dealing with all the way through Sunday on April 17th in the south and east. You can see we got some cold air hanging out up here around the Great Lakes and some isolated snow showers, especially off the lakes as we go all the way through Sunday into Monday. Uh, some cold rain in New England on Sunday as well. And then we've got a new storm system back here bringing some heavier snow into Idaho and Montana around 2 a.m. on Sunday. Let's push this forward into Monday. OK, here we are, 2 a.m. on Monday. We've got a new area of potential, you know, rain and severe weather in the south. Uh, and on the northern side, we have some snow. OK, so more snow for Minnesota all the way down into portions of northwestern Illinois, possibly. Uh, but what's really concerning to me is that this is more moisture, more rain down here in places that really don't need to see it. Uh, if this contextualizes, we will uh, see more flash flooding problems down here all around the Mississippi River Delta, way up into the Ohio River Valley. So keep that in mind uh, as we continue to push this forward. This is going to try to come a full on bona fide low pressure system East Coast storm by 8 p.m. on Monday. And look at this. We actually have a surface low over here uh, in North Carolina that's going to try to bring down a lot more of the cold air. It's flinging that uh, moisture around the northeastern side, and we have a potential snowstorm, a potential April snowstorm forming up here uh, for portions of the Ohio Valley and uh, into the north and east. Look at this big area of cold air being fueled by the low and also the high pressure over here coming down from Canada. This is going to allow for a lot more warm air to advect into the west and more dry air, and all that moisture is being held up over here in the cold zone. And look at that. We've got heavy snow possibly in western Pennsylvania around 8 p.m. on Monday. Let's push this into the future, and this just only <laughs> gets more and more impressive as we get into 8 a.m. on
on Tuesday. We got heavy snow in the upstate New York area, uh, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. You guys could be seeing heavy snow and uh, maybe some gusty winds during this time period. And a lot of wraparound snow showers making it all the way down into portions of Virginia on Tuesday, April 19th, guys. We're talking about uh, a moderate snowstorm here. Uh, but still, uh, this could affect places as far south as into North Carolina if the track lines up right uh, with those snowflakes and maybe even a decent accumulation in portions of Ohio and Pennsylvania. So uh, we'll, we're going to keep a very close eye on this. This is just one model, obviously. Let's take a look at those projected snowfall totals from our models. This is the Canadian model. You can see that it's got a uh, pretty decent amount of snow, maybe over 10 inches in upstate New York. Pretty good amount of snow up here in South Dakota as well. And of course, the higher elevations over here in the West are going to get a bunch of snow, especially in the Cascades and the Sierras. Some places will see over a foot of additional snowpack there. Widespread one to three inches for all of Wisconsin and Michigan, unless you're up there in the UP where you could get more than three or four inches. Now, let's look at some other models. This is the Euros take, okay? The European actually pummels the West Coast, brings a little bit less to Wisconsin, but a whole lot more to Ohio. Look at that. Ohio and Pennsylvania, two to four inches. What do you think about that? Uh, and then still a pretty good snowstorm, especially in the higher elevations of the Northeast over there in Vermont and New Hampshire, but even in the valleys, maybe three, four, five, six inches in portions of upstate New York. What about the American, huh? The GFS model. This is actually a little bit less bullish on the overall snow totals for the Northeast, but more over here on the West and especially up there into portions of Manitoba, uh, where some people could see uh, a foot of snow, maybe two feet of snow or more. So this is why we're not putting a lot of stock into the actual forecast here. The forecast models are all over the place. We will know a lot more as we go forward. But for now, hey, if you're down here in Ohio and Pennsylvania, you guys aren't necessarily uh, accustomed to getting uh, more than three or four inches of snow after April 15th, but this could be the time that we see that happen. So maybe it's time you go over to shopryanhall.com and get you a Snowtown baby shirt. I, I didn't think we'd be using those until a little bit later down the road, just to be honest with you. Hey, huge shout out to our members over here. Thanks to everybody that's supporting the channel. Uh, we have 2,300 and something members now. I do plan on doing a members only live stream within the next three or four days. So make sure you pay attention to the community tab on this channel. If you're a member, I'm going to do some educational content over there. And of course, we're also just going to have kind of like a relaxing stream that's a little bit different from the severe weather stuff. So uh, thank you guys so much for being here. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Ooh.